him during the week, Jan over in, in Alabama, oh, wow. oh. and uh, he wrote, oh look we've got a song of his. Yeah, you like it. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll, pl we'll play that yeah, one first. Yeah, wait a minute. Go and do it. We'll play that one first. Yeah, we'll do it now. We'll okay. do it now. Okay. Yeah, he's going to send more through. Yeah, well, I said we don't want any of your Frank Sinatra ones. <laughs> 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 a lot of those like Frank Sinatra. <laughs> 
after he's to see you. Yeah. And I said, no, and he always oh, no. <laughs> right. he came he sings gospel. He, he's really good. Yeah, really yeah. good. He's so He sent it through um on the Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, he did. So he had good about an hour with him on the phone. Oh wow. Oh, that's oh, that's great. That's yeah. That's great. That's so much Yeah, well he's right there in the Bible Belt, isn't he? So yeah. This song, it always yeah. reminds us of when we were in Moorah. He used to sing that, even Brenda. Mm -hmm. And he could sing it. He could but his wife but, but could sing too. Yeah. They, sing, they used to sing good together, didn't they? Mm. What number was that? 192, 192. Some Glad Morning. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. You've got it. You've yeah, got that it, doesn't Megan. mean it's your pick. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean you get out of it. It does now, Megan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Some glad morning when this life is all I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. Yeah. 
it by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more happy days and then I'll fly away. To a land where joy shall never end, I'll fly away. Amazing how some songs just bring back memories mm, to you. Yes, they do. Mm. I know a lot of these because we sing them in fellowship. Mm. 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 The one I saw reminded me of the American. Yeah, me too. What one? <laughs> Because isn't your uh, pick on it? I'm 69, Megan. That's fine. <laughs> 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 oh, that's picking. Picking on me. Oh, I didn't know there was one song and I thought, oh, when we used to set your fellowship. Mm. And, uh, I remember. So, when we walk with the Lord? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Trust and obey. Mm -hmm. I always tell me when we sing that at church. Guess <laughs> mm. what we sing today? Mm. <laughs> what is your song? 169. 169. Look at the pages. Here we go. Good. On page 39. Page 39, yeah. When we walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who 
So that's Psalm 19. The chapter we're going to look at first is Numbers 25. And we're going to read the full chapter because um, this gives us an indication of what, uh, what happens uh, when a people, uh, God's people, uh, desert him and, and do the things that God no longer wants them to do and actually grieves the heart of God. And, and this is what's happening in Australia today. Uh, we've got so many people. We've got, we live in a secular society. Oh, that's how we've got, we've got a Christian Prime Minister. Well, it doesn't matter. You know, we've got a secular push. We have laws that are being pushed through that are against the Word of God. We have people that are, are being grieved uh, because of uh, what's happening in our nation today. And, uh, and you'll see as we look at Numbers 25, it's a, it's a powerful example of how a plague can be stopped. I'm not saying that, that uh, this is the way we can stop this plague. <laughs> I think when you read through Numbers 25, you'll see that uh, that would not be uh, all that uh, politically correct today. <laughs> but um, uh, Numbers 25, it, uh, it's, it's a powerful, short chapter, really, uh, but uh, it's nevertheless, it's very real. Uh, Larissa, could you read that out? <clears throat> Numbers 25. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit boredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people, and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the high priest, had turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of a chief house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Cosby, the daughter of Zer, he was head over a people and of a chief house in Midian. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor, and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. So you can see how a plague could be stopped. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's God sent the plague upon the children of Israel. Why? Because they went whoring after other gods. Mm. More than that, they went whoring after the women. Mm. Because it usually began with immorality, mm. and then it began with them expecting them to worship the gods that they were whoring after. Mm. See, this is exactly what happened with Solomon. Solomon actually began to have these wives from other nations. Yes. Mm -hmm. And from these other nations, they led him to erect temples for their gods. Yes. Yes. 
And so he was taken away from that place where he was worshipping the living God. Now, the judgment was already given to Moses. It seems like he, that Phinehas sort of acted on his own. But no, the judgment had already been given to, to Moses to go and take the heads of these people and slay them. And this was the head of the person, one of the leaders of Israel, that was bold enough when the people were weeping before the tabernacle. Now, now, can you imagine many people today weeping for what's going on in Australia with the abortion? Can you imagine people weeping in Australia because of the same-sex marriage? Because they have dishonoured the marriage covenant of God, because they have, have said, oh, you can kill the unborn. Even today, they are saying that it is a essential service. Yeah. It's an essential service to kill the unborn. Mm -hmm. Even though there are uh, surgeries that are not being done, elective surgeries, where there's one yeah. person that I've seen about having a, 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 a cancer operation mm -hmm. and an MRI, he's not allowed to have that because it, uh, he's been told that it will be indefinitely deferred. I know we've heard today on the radio that uh, people are saying, well, elective surgeries may be out, uh, outsourced again. To uh, maybe mm. brought back a little bit, mm. but they got no idea. But they see the killing of the unborn and the danger to the women as being an essential service. Mm -hmm. Also, they're looking at using the Emergency uh, Practices Act right now, looking at, uh, at extending that to telemedicine. It will not only kill the babies, but it will also cause great pain and distress and possibly death to the women. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what God sees. This is. This is a, a, a betrayal of God, his plan. His law says thou shalt not kill. His law says thou shalt not commit adultery. His law says thou shalt not have a man marry a man. He, it dishonours God. God is, is really moving against Australia. So then we have laws now. We have laws that tell us social distancing for at least two years until we get the coronavirus vaccine then we'll be able to travel. Then we'll be able to do these things. This is a man-made law. Now, I want to look at today, go through some of the laws that have been made by men, mm -hmm. by governments. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying we don't obey the government. Mm -hmm. In or It says, render to Caesar the things yes. that are Caesar's, Jesus. but to God the things that are God's. Mm -hmm. You cannot render to Caesar what must be rendered to God. Mm. That's the litmus point for me. Jesus said that. Yeah. Now next week I'll look at the difference between Paul and Peter. I'm going to look at the area around how Paul lived under as a Roman citizen. So he could stress things like, I'm a Roman citizen, you beat me up, I'll cause you to, to have the results of that. Now, Peter was living under a religious system that brought him before the Sanhedrin. And he said, you only, uh, you only do <coughs> what God wants me to do, rather than obedience of men. Remember, on that score. So, we're going to look at a, a few of the things, how this applies to us. And that's what we're going to take away today is very important because this will prepare us for how we actually respond to the laws of men. Like I said, you know, there is undoubtedly a, a threat. There are people dying of this, uh, dying of the coronavirus, and there certainly is a responsibility by government has to protect its people. Mm. But it's a political area that they are responsible for also is to protect the lives of of all people, not only the physical side of it, but also the emotional, mental, and the spiritual side. That's what God gave them charge of. So, we look at, um, I want to go back to Adam and Eve first off. God gave a very clear command to, to Adam, didn't he? He, um, he said very simply, uh, he gave a command, and this is where the first first command came into place in Genesis 2, 16 and 17 
we all know it. I'm going to go through some of these, and you will know these left and right. Yeah. You know, it says so. I won't need to to re-stress and re-read those things. But he he said, of every tree of the knowledge of of uh, of the garden you shall eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat, for when you eat thou shalt surely die. So every law that God gave has a consequence. A law without a consequence is simply a suggestion. 150 kilometres an hour. Mm -hmm. I could do that speed up in the Northern Territory because they had no speed limit up there. <laughs> but if I said, I'm not going to obey the law here and I'm going to get in the car and drive at 150 k's going down Port Wakefield with Colin in the car. <laughs> Colin will be there. Dad's got a smile on his face. You don't know how fast he went to the issue. Colin will be there. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> see, <laughs> you see but, but, but the thing is, we do obey those laws because that's there for our safety. That's, that's for uh, the, 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 the... I drive on the left-hand side of the road. I do all those things. Because the law says to do that. Mm. And, uh, and, but the reality is then, that if they overstep it, if the government of the day does things that are, are abhorrent to God, that are against God's law, they have gone against that place where they are to be obeyed. It's as simple as that. Now, I'll use some examples. Exodus 1.22 Make a note of these if you want to. Pharaoh ordered to kill every son. Every son. Now, what happened? There was a woman that disobeyed the Pharaoh's command. And she brought forth a son and for three months hid him. Think about what would have happened if that son had been discovered by any one of Pharaoh's men during that three months. They would have killed him. But what, as it turned out, under God's providence, God preserved Moses, who led the children of Israel out of Egypt. So she disobeyed the Pharaoh. She disobeyed its, an authority mm -hmm. there. We find here that Herod, also a similar thing here, Herod in, uh, in Matthew 2.16 says that... Uh, Herod gave the command. He saw that he was mocked to the wise men and he was angry. And he slew all the children. He didn't do them personally, but he sent people who were commanded to slew the children that were under two years old. And that's where it fulfilled what Jeremiah said, that Ramah, in losing her children, weeping and mourning, in Ramah. Rachel. 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 Yeah. Rachel. Morning yeah, her children. And that is so the power Rachel. of so people in command that that do shocking things. And that many, many people were were slain as a result of that. Of course you know Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. <laughs> I don't need to go into that either. Mm -hmm. See, the command of God was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm. And what they were told to do? Bow down before this golden statue. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> and uh, that upset Nebuchadnezzar. It's a big time. So he gets this fire guard, and we know the story. He did it up so much so that his, his guards were the ones that cooked. <laughs> they were shish kebabs, and, and they were at that point where they were, were, were really, really destroyed. But he saw within the fire someone who walked as a son of man. So we saw there how the pride of a leader can come to that place where they say, bow down to me, do what I say. This is what happened to, to, to so many of the Stalin. So many Pol Pot. Yeah. These are people in our day that have killed their own people. 
that have slain their own people. And then we see the, the tricky thing where you get some smart bureaucrats in Daniel's time that thought, well, we can't trip him on anything that he does for, for Darius, can't do anything like that. But what we can do is trip him up on anything to do with his God. So, for your sake, Darius, we're looking out for you because we want everyone to obey you. <laughs> now, get a decree and let it be signed by you and it's a law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be changed. They were tricky. They were tricky. And so they get the law changed. And he is brought before Darius after having disobeyed that law. He went up into his, into his place of prayer and just prayed three times a day. And, uh, and we find that in Daniel 6, 5-11. This is where the leaders themselves can be manipulated by the bureaucrats. To say things and do things and make a law for the people that they must obey. Then I look at in John, where, where it's just before the Passover, and uh, there are people in the temple and they are selling. Now, what authority did Jesus have, they asked him. But it was the same as what Phinehas had. It was the zeal of his father's house that he just knotted this, this whole sort of cords that were there and he whipped them out of the temple. I reckon that would have been a sight. But people see Jesus as gentle, mild. But it was for the zeal of his father's house, the same zeal that Phinehas had, that he just sent out and drove them out of the temple. And, and so we see today that there are very strong precedents in the word of God that tell us very clearly that we must have that same zeal. So, the law that we have is such that if you obey the state law that is against God's law, then you've made the state your God. Now this has consequences, because like I said at the beginning, every law has consequences. If you don't socially distance at the moment, in particularly in South Australia and in more so in Victoria and Queensland and, and New South Wales, a thousand dollar fine. If you go into a place like Jill's, it'll be a five thousand dollar fine for her if the police catch people not socially distancing. That is the consequence of that law. And it's been made not by the legally represented people that we have put into Parliament, Parliament has now given the power to the police. Grant Stevens has been given that authority. Now, the police are simply citizens in uniform. They don't have the power to, to do legitimately what the state says on that front. In other words, it's a man-made law that's using the police to enforce a fine, and many of those fines have been annulled when they have been checked out because the police have been over-exercising their powers. Some of them have been totally ridiculous from some of the things that they've done. Not all of them. A lot of the police are, are very well motivated. They see that this is the thing that, uh, that they've been called to do. And, and they're doing it from a right motive. But we've got some, uh, some people there that have, uh, have got some areas that are really problematic. Now this is where we have a court system. So that we have... The Parliament makes the laws and the courts enforce the laws. There's separation of power. So for example, when I went to Maitland, 
Uh, the police, as you well know, they sort of said, well, you know, you can't do that here. I asked, what law? What law? And the simple thing is that, as Missy has suggested, that I take it with me all the time, the High Court ruling is that, the High Court ruling is that I can speak, I can preach on the street, particularly on the basis that the High Court ruling says that I can. The High Court ruling says that there is no one in a democratic society must get permission before they make a political statement. And what I start with by saying on the streets is that I am against the killing of the unborn and all of the people that are legislating, this is political, that le are legislating for these judgments to occur. Now, with this comes the area around which we have to really come to that place. So, the, um, so here is the reality of what we've got, where the High Court says, the highest court in our land has said that I can, and on this front it says that you can't, on their front. So, this is where it all comes back into, into play. Now, it's a law with a consequence. But also God's law has consequences too. As it did with the in Numbers 25. Numbers 25 came to that place where God judged the children of Israel because their attitude towards him was really rejecting what he had said very clearly. Now, Romans 13, as I said before, it might be good to have a look at that. Romans 13. Romans 13. Because I'll open it up for in a minute. Because this is I was, this is something I've had to work through, and uh, and really come to a, a, a position myself. And this is where a lot of Christians are afraid today, mm -hmm. because of this area. See, it says in Romans thirteen, "Let every man be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be ordained of God." Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist such shall receive to themselves damnation. Now that's a pretty pretty strong area, isn't it? So it's really saying, obey the state. Obey whatever the people say with you. But they have to come to that place of being obedient to God himself. Even the Queen has made an oath when she was, cor uh, when she was crowned to come to that place where she would honour and uphold the laws of God according to the Word of God. In other words, the, the, the early ones, the early ones in the Jewish tradition, they would read the Word of God. They would have to read the Word of God. They'd have to know what, what God's law was. There were many that, you know, in Josiah's time, they'd lost the law. And consequently, the, the, the leaders of that day were totally off and would lead the people in the wrong way. But if we come back to that place of saying, okay, we will do everything that the, the state says for us to do. We commit ourselves to a, 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 an oath, if you like, to obey a law that may be contrary to God's law. So in the current situation, Vaccination. May the 1st, everyone who is going into a nursing home has to be vaccinated. Staff as well. Now, the reason is they're saying that it's because of the health areas that can be brought in to damage the health of the of the people uh, that are in there. But if this goes on, say to, with the coronavirus vaccine, 
that you have to be vaccinated before you can travel. And if in that vaccination they force you to have that vaccination, because it's a state law, it's, you can see how cleverly it can be used. Even though there is much areas there where the vaccination itself can cause problems, mm -hmm. huge problems. Now, if then, after that, it comes back to the place that you can never question your government as to why they're doing these things. If they don't respond mm -hmm. to any of those things that you, you're asking them, why are you doing this? And I know I notice even now that people, if you say, if you say to anyone, even Christians out there at the moment, if you even begin to question some of the things that are being said, they say, oh, you know, you've got to obey the government. You've got to. I put up a thing on Facebook, and it said very simply uh, that uh, you know there are so many lies that are being distributed right now uh, around this coronavirus. And uh, the, the side of that is that, well, uh, a person said, well, you've got to get your information from the government website. That sounds very good, but it, where are they getting their advice from? We keep hearing experts are advising the Prime Minister. What experts? I want to know who the experts are. What modelling are they using? What modelling are they using to come to the conclusion that we've got, we, we, some modelling is saying that this is only the first of nine waves of, uh, of a, an, a pandemic. Nine waves. They're saying that already the second one is on the way in Wuhan right now. So this is scary stuff for people. I mean, we're, people have been locked up in their the rooms. There are people in the, that are saying, hey, you know, this is, where are the, 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 the rules and regulations coming from? Who's got the authority to do this? So then when it comes down to there, we must, some are saying we must unquestionably obey every law that our government brings. We come to more modern times. Look at Bunyan. He ended up in Bedford jail. Why? Because he refused to obey the law that says you're not allowed to preach. So, but we get we get Pilgrim's Progress from his efforts there. God turns it around for good, and uh, and so that that's that's the brilliant part that I find with God doing now. Uh, and uh, uh, Tyndale, he was told not to actually translate the Bible. Translate the Bible. Henry VIII told him that he would, but you know Henry VIII ended up having Bibles in all the churches. This is the way God does things. But it, it took Tyndale, one man, who had the zeal to get, make the Word of God available to every... He said even a peasant should be able to read the Word of God and make his own decision about it. In more recent times, we have Niemöller, we have Bonhoeffer, who stood against the, the Nazis. We, they thought that they would be it, the church would be a rollover. Exactly the same things that are happening now by the governments in the world to try and stamp out Christianity happened in Nazi Germany. When the church itself stopped having the cross away like that and bent it to mix in with the Nazi flag, that was when the church lost it. And it began to be judged. It began to have the power of God move on. You see, there's power in the cross. It's the only one where there is power of salvation in the cross. And when, as we've seen in Germany, as we've seen that, when they negated the power of the cross, they were left with the swastika, which wrought so much area around. But it was the church at that time that compromised the confessing church, the whole sort of church where where they gradually whittled it down. They made it so that that so that Hitler would become the saviour of the Aryan race. I've got a, a book there that uh, that was given to me by Robin and Trevor, 
the, the um, Hitler's cross gives a phenomenal how that came about. So, with all of that, Richard Wormbrand, because he would continue to preach in Romania, he was tortured. He was was really brutally, but God turned it around. He was released and, and went throughout the Western world alerting them that there will be needs for preparing for persecution. And that's what I want to do even more in these days. We need to prepare for persecution. Mm -hmm. Because that is exactly what's going to happen. Why do that? We are to prepare for the time when the state will mandate actions initially for good reasons, for example, public health, and then mandate that unless you comply, you will not be able to buy or sell. I know what you, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Mm -hmm. Revelation 13, 16 and 17 oh, yeah. causes all, both small and great. Who yeah. causes all, both small and great? It's the government of the day, the mm -hmm. state government that is basically saying you must do what I tell you. Mm -hmm. Rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their yep. foreheads, yep. and yep. that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark of the, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Mm. Now what's the consequence of that? Revelation 14, 6 to 13, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and in every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon has fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she had made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Isn't it interesting that Numbers 25 echoes here. She, they, they were seduced to follow the immorality of that day. And the third angel followed them, saying with our voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or on his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture under the cup of his indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends up for ever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image. And whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. It's going to get rough. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labours and their works do follow them. Mm. So, I'm not saying that this is the beginning of that. But I also see the marks of uh, a, a governmental system that are using the police to enforce things that are not coming into the place. Now, that where, they're, where they're saying that yeah, it's OK to kill the unborn. It's OK to get married if you're a man and a man. Mm. And I say that this is the wrath of God about to come upon our nation. The wrath of God already has come. So how do we respond to it? How do we deal with it? I believe that very selectively we need to come back to knowing the Word of God. We need to know what God is saying today. And in Matthew 24 and Luke 21, these are the beginning of sorrows. And these, this thing that's happening even right now, I can see that, that, that there are Christians that are, are saying, just better obey them, otherwise we're going to be cut off, you know. We've got some people uh, in, in different parts of the country, no, not so much in Australia, but in America, they're rebelling quite strongly against being vaccinated, against the, the whole sort of thing of, uh, of having to be locked down. There are people that are locked down here that don't need to be locked down. Mm -hmm. But, but they they thought, well, this is what we need to be doing. And, uh, and anyone who says that, oh, well, they don't need to be, well... They're irresponsible. They're yeah. saying that, you know, you, you are, you, you're, you're spreading dissension and disobedience to the government. Mm -hmm. How will we go when it really comes down to it that you won't be able to buy or sell anything? 
unless you take the mark of the beast. This is the time. I don't think it'll be as obvious as as, as this here, like like in some countries right now, they are having this right now. Where, I think it's in Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, where they're injecting so that they can easily get through. Uh, they're injecting the, the, the microchips so they can just go into a supermarket and buy food and have it in their hand. So they don't have to worry. Oh, it's been used for good reason. They're saying, oh, well, you won't need to carry your money with you. You won't need to worry about being robbed, robbed unless they cut off your hand. You know, at the moment, you can get, you know, you can get uh, the under a hundred dollars. You can simply pass it through, and uh, and people can grab your credit card or, or your, your, any card, and they can get rid of your your bank account by doing it a uh, hundred dollars at a time, under a hundred dollars at a time. So this is the world in which we live. But how do we rem how do we move with this? I think it's the resolve that we have that says, okay, well, this is the situation that we face. We um, this Thursday, I'll just encourage you to. Uh, I'm not expecting you to come down with me, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but this Thursday, I'll I'll be going down to Maitland, mainly because they have obeyed, disobeyed the law of the High Court. And I can do that. I'm allowed to do it here. It's the same law yeah. in the High Court. Mm. But they're saying, no, you're not allowed to do it. You'll go home, that sort of thing. So uh, we need prayer at this time. Mm. But every one of us has to make up our own mind. It's, you don't have to come back to a church leader. Everything I've said today you can come back and check out yourself because we've got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. I can be wrong, but that's me then. Mm -hmm. But if you follow someone blindly, which is what's going to happen mm -hmm. in so many people that are believing, that they have to obey every law that the government lays down. Dangerous. It's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So... That's where I'm sitting today. Any comments or anything that uh, that you'd like to sort of ask any questions about? Because it's a big subject. Mm. So yeah. now the child's trying to tell me what the rules yeah. were yesterday. Yeah. Couldn't be more than eleven or twelve trying to tell me what he thought the rules were. I said, and I stood my ground and went to buy lunch at um, Chubby's place yesterday, and he's telling me I'm not allowed to be in there, and he's lining up with his mum. And I was not mm. allowed to be in there. Mm. What was that, sorry? Oh, yesterday when you were out with Peter at Wakefield. Mm. Yeah, and he thought this child well, came straight up to her and told her to get out of the shop, basically, because not allowed to be in there. You know, these are the rules. No. I mean, I could have turned about that off him. Well, that's the rules. Why are you out with your mother if it's one person out of the time? But I just yeah. told him, no, I have a right to stand here and wait for my order. Thank you. I'm not leaving. <laughs> hmm. Oh, little kids getting. Hmm. But you see, they become their own police. They do. Mm. That that was. The they point. do. Yes. Kids especially do that. A child thinking they can police mm. adults mm. based on, and his mother standing there letting him do it. Hmm. Well, who's your authority, really? Yeah, that's what you ask, and and but every one of us has to move back to that place. Well, who am I obeying? Mm. Who am I obeying? And am I doing it for the right reason? Yeah. Am I doing the it for the right reason? What's the motivation? Mm -hmm. Is it to give God glory? Or, like, I, lo I love that. So I woke up with it the, the other morning. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Mm -hmm. See, the soul is where the battlegrounds come. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. The soul, the, the, the mind. The the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm. You're right, it's the judgment of God. Yeah, I mean, I take heart from Phineas. Yeah. When I've read it before, I've thought, hmm, it's a bit rough. I've had people question me about it. You know, is that right? This is the God of the Old Te God of the Old Testament, just mm -hmm. allowing that person. But he'd already given that command: mm -hmm. kill yeah. all those who were the leaders. Mm 
Yes. Because the leaders were leading the leading people astray. astray. Yeah. That's what's happening. They're in that power. Yeah. And, and they are. That position and of power. And the leaders influence. that are a problem. Mm. Yeah. They're leading people astray. Yeah. Mm. Forcing their will. And with mm. that power mm. comes that responsibility and greater accountability. Yeah. Such yes. Sheep, aren't they? they don't think a lot. Most of them just don't think. They're just mm. real sheep. Mm. 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 I don't think. No. Mm. Mm. It's a it's a difficult way to navigate through, particularly when you're talking with with people that uh, are fearful. Mm. Um, but also, you you've got to come to a place where um, you've got to make your own decision yeah. where that sits, because you're going to give an account to God yourself. Mm. Yeah, you know, he is a consuming Absolutely. fire. Yes. He he yeah. is he is a consuming fire. But uh, you know, that's where I've been in the word this last week. Now consequently sometimes the preachers themselves can get to that place where they become very very focused on what they see. But they in in that, you know, people go back to the word of God themselves. And and if the preacher's wrong you can feel confident that they can, that you can speak into there. Mm. Yeah. Oh, look, I get many people telling me that I shouldn't be preaching on the streets. I say, I say, yeah. uh, I say, look, uh, well, what would you do? What, would you? No, no, oh, I'm honest. I, I want to find out what you're, you're going to do to to bring the gospel to mm. people. In mm. uh, many ways, people can share the gospel. Yes. Many, many. It doesn't need a preacher on the street to do no. that. Mm. Look, there are many things on, we can do it through, uh, like Arthur this morning, mm. yeah. like uh, Greg Donald, like, mm. like many, many ways, it's not that, but I'm saying, well, well what do you do? And uh, we've got people that are saying, well, you know, you, you've just got to obey the government at this time. Well, show me the scriptures, it's show there. me the scriptures, because I've looked at the scriptures, and, uh, and if you can show me a really strong argument where people obeyed the state all the time. And if they did obey the state, then the state becomes their God. If I bowed down to Nebuchadnezzar, it'd be easy, wouldn't it? You wouldn't get chucked into a fire. Not that's a very cold day, I'd be quite welcoming, but but while well, you but all those that bowed down hmm, they're not remembered. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are. Mm -hmm. So we, I did a thing up on Facebook today with a Peter Marshall quote. Oh yeah, that was good. Yeah. So I'd rather be one person who is dealing with a hopeless cause. Yeah, I like that. Mm. I saw that like rather that. than a large multitude. Mm who are going along with a cause that will ultimately be defeated. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Well, that's the thoughts for today. I, I know it's, it's something that I, I, I need to... That I, I know it's being recorded and it will get out there and uh, I want to send it out to many people because there are many of out there at the moment that are really concerned. Mm. Uh, about how to respond to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How to respond. Um, it's a good opportunity for people to get before the face of God and hear what God is saying to them. Yes. You know, because there is another scripture where um, Paul's trying to find it where if you think you're doing wrong, then you are sinning. Yeah. And so sometimes people can um, respond in a way that for those that are stronger in faith, um, can carry that and can take the consequences. Those that are not so strong, that are feeble in their faith, mm. um, if this is a time for them to grow in that. Mm. Yes. There is a yeah. time for that, and so um, and so sometimes they may lean towards doing what the state says, which I'm, I'm not agreeing with. But it takes that part where God can quicken them to do something or give them an action to do in the day yes. that may challenge that as well. Mm. But there's an opportunity. God and the Holy Spirit always move with grace mm. and, and mercy. Yes. And Absolutely. can help. And it's 
Um, yeah, so this is a time, and I'll look at this so-called lockdown or whatever, um, and particularly where the church is, and particularly for us as individuals, it's a great opportunity where God has our attention if we give it to him. Mm -hmm. And if we truly seek his face and we say, Lord, you know, this today, I might be fearful. Then, you know, we could either sit there in amongst our fear and let it swallow us up and we dig a grave and nobody will be able to attend our funeral except for 10 people. But <laughs> even then they might decide, uh, no, I'm not going to. Um, but if we sit there, instead of burying ourselves with our unbelief, if we turn and look up to God, that's the critical point. If we turn and look up to God himself, who is our salvation, and we say, what do you see, O oh Lord? Because here I am on this God-given earth. There's all this around me. I can be listening to the media. I can be listening to lots of different things. I can be picking up the fear factor from friends or loved ones or even other people, whatever. Um, but is that going to impact on my spirit? What do you say, God? I think that... Helps break, helps us to strengthen us. You know, there's lots of times when um, Jesus said, you know, when it came out from the Mount of Transfiguration, and there the disciples busy trying to heal this boy, and and Jesus does it, and they say, how come we couldn't do it? And it's like, well, you know, this comes by prayer and fasting, but there's also lots of times when Jesus said, well, you know, ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's going to be some people that have little faith, but we don't have to remain with little faith. We can go back to the source of our salvation, the source of our faith. And I think that's where what you were saying is, okay, people, if they lean towards the government and do that advice, yeah, they put the government as God, but they're also putting their faith and trust and salvation in the government. Government will let you down constantly. Mm. You know, after this has passed, we're going to be paying for it. No. Out of money, oh, what, where, how's sure it going to be created, okay? But, and sometimes, you know, and I do praise and thank God um, that for Australia and for particularly South Australia, that we do have a lot of freedoms that some people are not taking advantage of, mm. yes. you know? And, um, and there is, if we've got the opportunity to meet with Christians and to strengthen our faith, because sometimes if you're just left by yourself, it's so easy how the enemy can have your ear. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, and, and just like that, I mean, so you feel that it's going at a time of great blessing. Yeah, but now it's... I feel it could be a time of great blessing. Yeah. Yeah, people on their own, like, they sit there and dwell on everything. That's it. You know, there are some things you can do on your own. They just dwell on all the bad things. That swallows them up. And you don't need to be listening to the ABC or the news all the time, 24-7. Because there is a lot of fake news and there's a lot of different things going out there that can... Take it. And once again, you're putting your salvation and your belief in that system, mm. rather than shutting it down and going, here's the word of God, this have a song book, whatever else, yeah. and listen to the and faithful, and, and just listen, and listen, and, listen. and take time and to be still, and I think, as a time yeah, to be still, yeah. and, and listen, and know yeah. that he's God, because I think there's been yeah. lots of times when people have been doing church, and that looks like, and at the end of time, move on from it. And uh, they still haven't allowed God to sleep. They haven't been transformed. Exactly. That's what He wants. That's yeah. That's why yeah. we're doing it. So, God, so it is a time right. for those that are weak in spirit and weak yeah. in heart to speak to faith and to become strong. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, and it's great to have the fellowship when you can. Mm. Yeah. Yes. That strengthens each other Certainly as well. Yes. Yes. Mm. Um, but if you are weakened by fear and that, God is a great source of strength and He can strengthen the weak knees and the weak heart and the Just give you that peace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're sitting there and sitting in fear like that. Well, I'm sure that many are. They are. Yeah. Sitting yeah. in their homes and sitting in fear. And that's it's just eating at them. And that's when they turn nasty. And yeah. They, they do. They get angry. And they sit there and judge the others. Yeah. To so many Dog things. Yeah. Yes. yes. It does. Mm. Mm. But yes, we can lift up people and as people lay people on your heart, because we don't know, and we do not need to know. No, I, I love the phone, because we could phone up uh, people this morning, like Robbie Goodfellow, and, and, yeah. uh, and, and, you know, just sitting on Arthur, and like you say, it is mm. a time of blessing, yeah, but yeah. It, it's to get into the, the Romans, it, it's, to, yeah. it's to consolidate mm. what God's, we've sat under the word for many years, I've heard I don't know how many sermons. 
Mm. I don't know Most how many. Most of us would have sat under. Sat under. Yes. Yes. And I feel we Absolutely. do take a lot for granted. We yeah. take our friends for granted. Yeah. And I, I, I think Romans 12, yeah. 1 and 2, yeah, present your bodies as a living sacrifice to mm. God every day. Uh, and be not conformed to this world. No, right. So that's a, a yeah. message there. Mm. Be not conformed. When the world wants to shape you into its mould to, yes. to serve yeah. Satan, yes. Yes. then God wants us to be shaped his by way. His Word. His way. Yeah, yeah. His yeah. way. Yeah. And you start thinking of how many single households there are. And if we did yeah. have a severe lockdown like Victoria or Pakistan, they would be own. just on their own. And people said they being judgmental of large families, but I tell you what, you wouldn't... You'd have a lot of company. <laughs> you would have, and yeah. then if you had little people around the place, they would keep your mind ticking yeah. and having to occupy oh, them. Oh, yeah, mm. it would. Yes, it would. Let lot people on their own. Yeah. It's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. So they are isolated. Mm. Mm. It's not mm. healthy. It's Spending not time not. in God's Word and fellowship with other Christians. Yeah. yeah. The creation, can this is God's command. So how can you break that? Mm. I mean, the government has said, isn't it, you can have ten people so why are people not getting it? That, that is very odd, isn't it? It is. They think in the state, I don't know, you go out and you don't see them, but there's a lot of criticism on like, Facebook. People that. nitpicking. And oh, I saw them. They, they, they shook did hands. This, they did that. No. But they shook hands. No. Oh, well, didn't we? we yes, saw. we saw that. And I just yeah. rolled my eyes. If mm. that's all you can worry about in these times. Mm. And forget what God has said. Yes. We're too caught up with what men are saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Too yeah. much yeah. of the things you've got oh, to Oh, yes. Of course, there's us to put a watch on our lips and on our hearts. Too. We do. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. And yeah. spread, yes. Yes, on night. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that's it. You're always going to hear those sort of things. So, right, yeah. That's when I switch off and let no, I'm not yeah. going to hear that any longer. That's yes, right. too negative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 No, it's all good. Spending time in the Word of God. It is. It's been a good time to have yeah. this. Because I think more than ever, they think of drama, don't they? They've mm -hmm. most of them. Right. So, looking for drama. Right, because they've got red lights of home and away. Home and away is not going to be going on anymore. Serena will be lost. <laughs> 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 Serena will be lost. <laughs> 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 Serena will be lost. 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 Serena I get more drama than I need. He likes to be peaceful. I don't mind him a bit of peace. He likes to be peaceful. They're not happy that someone's been stirred up or they're stirring someone up. Yeah, that's true. But they're not happy without a bit of a bit of a bit of habit and a bit of drama. 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 Yeah. That's true. Well, shall we have communion? Oh yes. Because we've that's the word. Solve the world's problems. <laughs> 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 <laughs>